Uh, right now, uh, let's bring in Eric Mayhofer. He is the CEO of Uber's Advanced Technology Group. And Eric, this is a huge step. What happened? How did you get to this position? Yeah, so what you see behind us is actually the result of four years now of our working together with Volvo. And that's our engineering teams, our executive teams, hand in hand, to build the first vehicle that is intended to be driven by a computer rather than by a human. Now it still has brake pedals and a steering wheel and traditional controls because we see a period of time where we're still in development as we're transitioning this technology to be able to drive without a person behind the steering wheel. So this thing has what we call fail operational brakes, fail operational steering, redundant power, and these are the, the, the fail safes so that if something happened to the primary braking system, if there was a failure, it would still be able to stop safely every time. So in a, in a car like this, if I'm the Uber passenger, instead of getting in the back like I normally would, I'd, I'd get in the driver's seat? No, no, you would still get in the back. That's the intention. Um, this car will have, it has three seats in the back, and the idea is you would get in it just as you would like an Uber X vehicle. Eric, can you put an actual timeline on when we can see these autonomous vehicles on the road? And I'm talking no safety drivers. When do they become commercially viable? Yeah, yeah, so there are a couple layers to the question you just asked. There's when you can see them at all without a vehicle operator and then when they're commercially viable. And commercial viability comes to scale. And that's one of the things that we've been working so hard together with Volvo to do is to, to design and execute something that can be manufactured at scale. So this is part of the ingredient set required to go to scale. But for us, we're going to be going to market in a very small area of cities and not at some massive, um, a thousand cars aren't going to show up overnight with no safety drivers. That's not how we'll go to market. We'll do it very slowly. We'll do it with, the, with society, with the local residents, with whatever regulators there are that are, that are uh, monitoring the space. We're going to do this slowly and gently. This isn't going to be right. a, a cold water moment for the world. So, Eric, when is that? I didn't hear a date from you, and I think it's amazing because at Elevate, you know, the Elevate team is willing to say that we'll see flying taxis by 2023. But in terms of this um, pilot, at least with no safety drivers, is that one year away, five years away, ten years away? In 2020, we intend to do our first limited no safety driver operations in very select small areas of cities. Okay, Eric, and then follow up to that, when does that become commercially viable? When do you start having a wider network of passengers riding in these vehicles beyond a pilot program? So commercial viability happens right away, but when does it become profitable is the other, is, is I think the, the, the crux of the question. And that comes to, it depends on how many vehicles you have operating in a particular domain. It's not worth, quote, launching a city if you can't put enough vehicles in that city to cost justify it, unless it's there just for development work, which is where we are now. For us to actually land in cities that are profitable, we have a handful of cities selected that we are going to use as our go-to-market cities. We haven't disclosed them, but we will be doing that through 2020. But Eric, the idea there would be that there would be a significant number of these cars on the road, and that would probably replace many of the drivers that you have in those cities. Right. I, I think it's important to understand one of the challenges Uber faces with its um, rides business, it's having trouble maintaining its growth. The, the amount Uber grows is uh, phenomenal, as we've all seen, and we want to keep that growth rate continuing. And getting driver partners on the network and getting them to stay on the network, that, that's, that's a, a very challenging thing for us. And with self-driving, we're going to be able to... Um, stabilize our growth a little bit more and add more of the service that people love so much.